money, interdimensional trade and reincarnation in the Lord's coins aren't decreasing. Our protagonist Aaron Steelguard is a cutthroat businessman that must take advantage of in order to conquer his fantasy world. Once upon a time, in a world full of magic and possibilities, we meet Aaron Steelguard, a 16-year-old boy with an extraordinary book called The Dimensional Trading Book. This magical book allows Aaron to purchase incredible items from other dimensions that don't exist in his own world. Sounds pretty cool, right? But here's the twist. Aaron reveals that in his previous life, he was born into a legendary Steelguard family, known for their heroic feats and ruling over the northern part of Navarro for generations. However, despite his prestigious lineage, Aaron always felt overshadowed by his grandfather and father, who were formidable knights of mythical and heroic rank. Poor Aaron was just a lowly 3RD class knight and couldn't compare to their greatness. To make matters worse, everyone in town mocked and treated him like a beggar. Why, you ask? Well, it turns out that Aaron had lost all his money after being deceived by some sneaky merchants from other dimensions. And as if that wasn't enough, his childhood nemesis, Kuttens, sends assassins to torment and kill him. Yikes! While being tortured, Aaron's assailants stumble upon his mysterious book. But guess what? All they see are blank pages. However, a strange artifact called the Bookmark Wish falls from the book. This artifact, Aaron recalls, was promised to grant anyone's wish. In his final moments, as Aaron wishes for a chance to correct his mistakes and change his fate, the artifact starts glowing. It seems telling the truth and accepting his flaws activated its magic. Suddenly, Aaron wakes up in a completely different place, in a bed he's never seen before. Confused and disoriented, he's approached by a maid named Easel. She informs him that the captain is looking for him. It's at this moment that Aaron realises something incredible. He has been transported back in time by 17 years. Overwhelmed with emotion, he embraces Easel. Aaron is now filled with remorse for how he treated her in his past life. Curious about his new chance at life, Aaron asks Easel why she came to find him. She explains that the captain is furious because he skipped training once again. Determined to make the most of this second chance, Aaron agrees to meet the captain after he gets ready. He understands that his old self is gone, and now he has the opportunity to become the strongest version of himself. With his sword in hand, Aaron steps outside, lamenting the loss of his previous muscular build, but embracing the fresh start nonetheless. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. If you could transport yourself into any Manwa world, which one would you choose and why? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now back to the recap. In a whirlwind of excitement, Aaron steps foot on the renowned training grounds, greeted by the sight of approximately 70 knights who were hailed as the pride of the Steel Guard family. Among them stands the formidable Captain Haphale, a first-class knight known for his sharp wit. With a mischievous grin, he wastes no time in mocking the arrival of the young master, testing Aaron's mettle. Bowing his head, Aaron pleads for forgiveness, only to be met with a storm of fury from the captain. In a fit of rage, Haphel proclaims that Aaron's training will be doubled as punishment for skipping the previous day's regimen. Undeterred, Aaron, with unwavering determination, accepts the consequences and musters the courage to ask if he should begin immediately. Taken aback by Aaron's unexpected resolve, the night captain finds himself momentarily speechless. Aaron's unwavering dedication and readiness to face the intensified training without hesitation surprises even the captain. With a renewed sense of purpose, Aaron throws himself into the arduous tasks at hand, firmly believing that this time he can prevent any future tragedies and sharpen his skills to their fullest potential. Days of relentless training take their toll, leaving Aaron utterly exhausted. Just as he catches his breath, a peculiar status window materialises before him, announcing the detection of a new user. Intrigued and startled, Aaron's curiosity peaks, but before he can react, the night captain interrupts, concerned for Aaron's well-being. In a perplexed tone, Aaron queries the captain if he can also see the floating status window. Baffled, the night captain wonders what Aaron is referring to, clueless about the enchanting display in the empty air. Attributing the phenomenon to mana exhaustion, the captain assures Aaron that he'll be fine. Lost in thought, Aaron ponders the sudden transformation of the dimensional trading book, which now appears before him in a mesmerising form, unlike its previous mundane appearance. Intrigued and determined, he accepts the enigmatic book, unknowingly embarking on a path of endless possibilities. Astonished by Aaron's resilience, the night captain can't help but be impressed by the young master's tenacity, realising he possesses an extraordinary spirit. On his way back, Aaron encounters the Grand Chamberlain, affectionately known as the butler, who kindly offers him a meal. Exhausted to his core, Aaron politely declines, confessing that he's too tired to eat. 
Curiosity getting the better of him, Aaron asked the butler if he saw anything peculiar during the display of the status window. With a twinkle in his eye, the butler recounts seeing a mesmerising blue flame shooting from one of Aaron's eyes. Amused by the situation, Aaron feigns nonchalance, dismissing it as a mere effect of his manner. Safely back in his room, he receives a notification unveiling his new account name and nickname, signalling the start of a fresh adventure. Aaron can't help but notice that his account name is different from his past life, but instead of dwelling on it, he embraces the change with open arms. As his account information appears before him, he assumes he's back to square one, starting from level zero. However, to his surprise, he discovers ten coins in his account, a stark contrast to his previous life where he had none. Intrigued by this unexpected windfall, Aaron ponders the possibilities it may offer. A week of rigorous training passes, and Aaron, eager to test his progress, requests a spa with one of the knights. The knight captain, sensing Aaron's determination, arranges a match with a talented knight named Fry. However, to challenge Aaron further, the captain instructs Fry to use only his left hand, denying him the use of mana. Initially feeling humiliated by the prospect of facing a mere sixth-class knight with such a handicap, Aaron casts aside his pride and urges Fry to fight with all his might. In a display of unwavering resolve, Aaron launches into a fierce assault, catching Fry off guard. To everyone's astonishment, Fry is pushed back by Aaron's relentless attacks, leaving them all questioning if this is truly the same young master they thought they knew. Aaron's epic showdown with Knight Fry sent shockwaves through the crowd as the young master emerged victorious in a stunning display of skill. Just a week prior, Aaron had returned to his room, beaming with triumph, clutching a box brimming with golden treasures he had collected. Little did he know that his newfound wealth would soon lead him on an exhilarating adventure. Eager to capitalise on his golden windfall, Aaron seized the opportunity to exchange his hidden gold for shiny coins. To his amazement, he received not the expected 25 coins, but a whopping 30 coins in return. This unexpected turn of events left him pondering the true value of gold in the ever-fluctuating world of currency exchange. As it turned out, the price of gold was influenced by the demand it garnered across different dimensions, adding a touch of mystery and intrigue to Aaron's journey. With ambitions of becoming a formidable merchant, Aaron contemplated raising his level to gain access to a wider array of products. Alas, his current world was a meagre level zero, leaving him devoid of valuable items. However, fate smiled upon him as he stumbled upon an enticing advertisement for mana stones, the very essence he needed to replenish his magical energy. Eager to strike a deal, Aaron engaged in conversation with a seller named Hearthstone, whose glowing red name intrigued him. Hearthstone offered low-grade mana stones for five coins and medium-grade ones for twenty coins. However, Aaron's sharp instincts kicked in when a window displaying the current market prices popped up, revealing a significantly lower cost of three coins for low-grade and twelve coins for medium-grade mana stones. Determined not to be swindled, Aaron threatened to report Hearthstone for breaking the law by overcharging. To his dismay, Aaron discovered Hearthstone's true nature as an evil merchant exploiting his employees. Driven by his sense of justice, Aaron adamantly refused to deal with Hearthstone. Yet, the cunning merchant desperate to salvage the situation, offered Aaron half of his initial asking price. Reluctantly, Aaron agreed and purchased two low-grade and two medium-grade mana crystals for a total of 25 coins. Surprisingly, only 22 and a half coins were deducted from his account, leaving Aaron puzzled by the system's mysterious discount. Moreover, Hearthstone, fearing exposure, pleaded with Aaron not to report him, an unexpected twist that piqued Aaron's curiosity. Unbeknownst to him, Aaron received a VIP perk in the form of a three-coin cashback, an enticing bonus that he nonchalantly brushed aside. Logging out of the exchange, Aaron eagerly absorbed the mana crystals, delving into his grandfather's ancient breathing technique known as the Breath of Steel. This powerful technique had granted him the strength to triumph over Night Fry, solidifying his reputation as a force to be reckoned with. However, Doubts began to creep into the minds of onlookers, speculating that Aaron's victory over Fry was nothing more than an elaborate ruse. Determined to prove them wrong, Aaron summoned another knight, Michael, to the arena. As the knight captain hesitated, Aaron's fierce older sister, Karen Steelguard, intervened, proposing a street fight style battle, devoid of mana and weapons. All eyes turned to Michael, the seasoned warrior, assuming his size and experience would secure him the win. But Aaron defied expectations once again deftly overpowering Michael and claiming victory. The crowd erupted into wild cheers, their scepticism vanquished by Aaron's awe-inspiring performance. Even his sister couldn't help but shower him with praise, acknowledging his remarkable abilities. 
Karen Steelguard possessed extraordinary potential, but the ancient breathing technique that formed the backbone of Steelguard was shrouded in secrecy, reserved only for men. Karen, a girl with immense insight and worth, had never been given a fair chance to prove herself. Determined to catch her attention, Aaron deliberately requested a sparring match in front of her, hoping she would see his dedication. Reflecting on his actions, Aaron silently apologised for resorting to tricks, though he believed they were necessary. As the family patriarch inquired about the significance of the evening's dinner, Karen shared that she had personally informed the cook as Aaron was about to embark on his journey to the prestigious academy. Her father then mentioned hearing from Karen about Aaron's triumph over a class six night. Humbly, Aaron clarified that it was merely a friendly wooden spa and that he still had much to learn. Interjecting, Aaron's elder brother dismissed it as a battle with an apprentice knight, lacking the intensity of a real sword fight. Nevertheless, their father acknowledged the achievement, shook hands with Aaron, and channeled his manner to assess his strength. Pleased with the outcome, he asked Aaron if he had any desires. Smiling slyly, Aaron cleverly responded, What I seek may be beyond your imagination, so let's leave it at that. His father solemnly swore on his manner to grant Aaron's wish if possible. With permission granted, Aaron sought access to the secret storage, convinced it held a crucial item. However, his older brother Kiruan, ever the rule follower, protested, only to be overruled by their father. Together, Aaron and his father entered the secret storage, where Aaron was given the freedom to select any item from the outer rim. Aware of the existence of a dimensional trading book on the planet, Aaron suspected there might be two copies, one he had brought with him from the past, and another in the storage room. However, he did not find the book in the outer storage. As he explored, a realisation struck him. Fourteen years had passed since he last stood here, and someone might have placed the book within the storage during that time. Returning to his father, Aaron proudly presented him with the hero trophy he had discovered. Aaron clutched the prize trophy tightly in his hands. This coveted treasure held a value beyond mere gold, but his father, perplexed by his choice, questioned the rationale behind it. Though not the most captivating item, Aaron confidently claimed it as his most treasured possession, leaving his father bewildered and exclaiming, You're truly unpredictable! Curiosity piqued. Aaron delved into the VIP centre of the book, expecting nothing more than mundane perks. To his astonishment, he discovered an abundance of VIP privileges, all maxed out. Suddenly, the world of currency exchange unfolded before him. With zero commission perks, his pockets were destined to overflow with wealth. Equipped with the eye of provident skill, he gained unprecedented insight into traders' information. The flow comprehension skill bestowed upon him the ability to discern the current prices of mana crystals, and thanks to the 10% overcharge perk, he gleefully paid a mere 22 and a half coins instead of the full 25 coins. All of this was made possible by his VIP benefits and the initial 10 coins from the daily attendance perk. Overwhelmed with joy, Aaron couldn't contain his excitement. He believed that with this newfound power, exacting his revenge would be a breeze. Wasting no time, he made his way to the exchange centre, ready to convert his hero trophy into riches. However, when he used his flow comprehension ability to assess its value, he received a disappointing 115 coins instead of the expected 140. Undeterred, he accepted the offer, rationalising that even a slight loss was a small price to pay for the ease of dimensional trading that the book had bestowed upon him. In a sudden realisation, Aaron's mind raced with a thought. Could this be the original dimensional trading book that had mysteriously vanished from the secret storage? It seemed as though the book had somehow found its way into his possession through an extraordinary twist of fate. Convinced that mana crystals were the ultimate item for purchase, Aaron decided to reach out to the previous scammer. The Hearthstone guy, known for his temper, became absolutely livid when he saw that Aaron had called him a scammer. But his anger quickly turned to surprise when he realised it was Aaron, the legendary trader himself. Intrigued, our hero seized the opportunity and asked if the Hearthstone guy would like to purchase more mana crystals. Aaron wondered if they could agree on the same price as last time, but Hearthstone Guy insisted it was a special case and couldn't be repeated. However, Aaron had a clever trick up his sleeve. He still had their chat histories. He proposed doing things the hard way unless Hearthstone Guy wanted to negotiate. Hearthstone Guy, fearing potential repercussions if Aaron reported him, weighed the risks. He knew that a temporary ban would result in massive losses for him. Reluctantly, he agreed to sell the stones at a reduced price and asked how many Aaron wanted. With a mischievous grin, Aaron countered, how much can you give, Hearthstone? He requested 25 mid-grades and 20 low-grades. 
Now let's take a moment to appreciate Aaron's VIP perks as the renowned Manhua Owl. With cashback and discounts, his cost for mid-grade crystals amounted to a mere 10 coins, while low-grade ones came to just 2.5 coins. Aaron wasted no time and promptly posted on the Book of Selling, advertising mid-grade crystals for 12 coins and low-grade crystals for 3 coins. Returning to the story, our dear Hearthstone guy was beyond furious to discover Aaron selling crystals at a lower price on the same channel. Aaron, blissfully unaware of the storm he had ignited, dozed off into a deep slumber. However, when he finally woke up, his inbox was flooded with messages from Hearthstone Guy. Each message dripped with rage, and Hearthstone Guy even threatened to obliterate Aaron's previous life. Little did he know, Aaron had learned a valuable lesson, responding with equal anger to someone's wrath, as they couldn't harm you across dimensions. Aaron's audacious response only fueled Hearthstone Guy's irritation. Confident in his actions, Aaron assured Hearthstone Guy that he did nothing wrong, and never claimed he wouldn't resell the crystals. Undeterred, Aaron boldly asked, Do you want to trade more? Unfortunately, Hearthstone Guy declined, stating that he wouldn't sell the crystals at a reduced price even if Aaron reported him. However, Aaron clarified that this time, he wasn't seeking a discount. He wanted to buy the crystals at full price. Hearthstone Guy stubbornly refused, but Aaron decided to appeal to his ego. Flattery became Aaron's weapon of choice, as he expressed that big shots like Hearthstone Guy shouldn't concern themselves with such trivial matters. Aaron went on to propose buying every single crystal available, thereby ensuring a profitable venture for Hearthstone Guy. With 455 coins in hand and a 30% discount, Aaron requested a whopping 50 mid-grade and 19 low-grade stones from Hearthstone Guy. To Hearthstone Guy's surprise, he confessed that he didn't even possess that many stones. He tried to justify his lack by explaining that having a crystal mine didn't guarantee an endless supply. In reality, he only had 25 mid-grades and 50 low-grades. Undeterred, Aaron boldly declared that he would purchase everything. Taking it a step further, Aaron lowered the price even more and put the crystals on sale. When Hearthstone Guy caught wind of this, his anger boiled over, and he showered Aaron with curses, suggesting that he take his wasteful spending elsewhere. Luckily, the Manhua Owl arrived just in time to shed some light on Aaron's ability to lower the price thanks to his VIP status. With each transaction, Aaron received coins from a large exchange and enjoyed a generous 30% discount. This allowed him to buy at higher prices, sell at lower prices, and still turn a profit. As it turns out, Aaron was willingly selling at a loss because he needed to complete 3,500 trades to level up from System 0 to System 1. Recognising that he needed more practice, Aaron acknowledged that while he may be quick, he wasn't a genius, and he would have to work even harder to thrive in this new realm. Unfazed by the challenges, Aaron decided to reduce the price even further, offering mid-grade stones for a mere 9.5 coins. The bar to complete 3,500 trades filled up faster than ever. In his previous life as a regional lord, it took him a whole year to level up to System 1, but in this extraordinary existence, he achieved the same feat in a mere 8 days. As his determination intensified, the flames in Aaron's eyes suddenly turned a fiery shade of red. After upgrading his system, Aaron's mind becomes a fascinating sponge, sparking his extraordinary journey. With this incredible upgrade, his skill absorption skyrockets by a mind-blowing 300%, while pesky side effects plummet by a cool 80%. Suddenly, even humble errand boys and restaurant workers wield the strength of mighty knights in the renowned Murim world, where System 1 resides. Aaron is utterly perplexed by his newfound privilege, and ponders what remarkable feat he accomplished to unlock it. Curiosity piqued, he employs the eye of privilege to investigate, only to come up empty-handed. His mind races with theories and he speculates that perhaps he levelled up. Lo and behold, a mysterious new event option pops up before him, tempting him to click and see what lies in store. With a mischievous grin, Aaron takes the plunge and clicks the enigmatic button. Like a jack-in-the-box, a flurry of colourful pop-ups inundate his screen, offering him a cornucopia of delightful discounts and VIP perks. Among the perks is the tantalising promise of receiving one shiny coin for every ten exchanged. But that's not all. A warm welcome message from the upgraded system appears, showering Aaron with three precious coupons, each containing a hidden system gift. Brimming with anticipation, Aaron carefully examines the coupons, eager to uncover the treasures they hold. As he unveils the contents, his excitement mounts. The gifts include the coveted Dantian formation, three years' worth of internal energy, a thrilling sneak peek of the body and sword martial arts, and a generous 500 store coins. Armed with this abundance of martial prowess, 
Aaron dives headfirst into absorbing the intricate art of combat. Thanks to the remarkable sponge residing in his head, he quickly masters the martial arts, leaving him astonished by his own rapid progress. However, there's a catch. He realises he needs internal energy to truly unleash the power of these martial techniques. Undeterred, Aaron voraciously absorbs the Dantian formation, unlocking the potential within him. As Aaron basks in the glory of his newfound abilities, his mind brims with curiosity. The sponge has proven itself as an exceptional learning tool, but what if he had enough money to supercharge his potential? The tantalising thought sends shivers of excitement down his spine, leaving him yearning for untold power. Having fully assimilated his new arsenal of skills, Aaron sets his sights on his next target, the scoundrel who swindled him in his previous life, Hakchil, the name that still lingers bitterly on his lips. This time, Aaron has a devious plan up his sleeve. He will turn the tables and extract his just dues from the cunning trickster, using his newfound abilities to enact the perfect revenge. This time, Aaron finds himself in a dilemma, seeking help to choose the perfect martial art. Determined to make the right decision, he parts with 20 shiny coins and seeks guidance from an expert. But wait, there's more. Aaron's adventure takes a thrilling twist as he stumbles upon the dimensional trader of the bamboo sect, a familiar face from Hakchul's world. Little did he know, Hakchul was a traitor to the bamboo sect, and Aaron seizes the opportunity to exchange juicy information about him for a whopping 200 coins. Now, with his pockets jingling, Aaron sets his sights on a target who wronged him so grievously in a past life that he could be considered the bane of the Steel Guard family. Determined to serve justice, Aaron devises a plan to make this scoundrel suffer as much as he did before. Enter Seokyun, the cunning librarian of the Heavenly Sword Library. Aaron introduces himself, pretending that Hakchil had recommended him. Seokyun, outraged at the comparison to scammers, bristles with anger. Aaron, playing innocent, slyly requests a powerful sword technique, and Seokyun suggests the mesmerizing plum blossom sword technique. This extraordinary skill emits a delightful aroma of plum blossoms during combat. Aaron, wide-eyed and curious, can't help but express his appreciation for the technique. However, when he asks about the cost, Seokyun quotes him 50 coins. Not one to back down, Aaron negotiates skillfully, showing off his haggling prowess. Seokyun, impressed by Aaron's persistence and recognising a potential new customer, offers him a discount, selling the technique for 35 coins. Aaron's patience is tested when a window pops up, revealing that the same technique can be bought for a mere 20 coins through a different channel. Suppressing his frustration, Aaron decides to make the purchase anyway, his determination unwavering. But alas, fate can be cruel. Aaron soon realises that he no longer needs the Plum Blossom Sword technique and decides to resell it at the original price. Unfortunately, this move results in financial losses, leaving Aaron feeling a bit defeated. Just as he's trying to shake off his disappointment, his loyal maid Ezel suddenly appears, visibly terrified by the intensity of Aaron's bloodlust. Aaron quickly conceals his menacing aura and anxiously asks Ezel what has happened. Concerned for her master, Ezel inquires if he needs anything, apologising for missing their morning training session. Aaron, feeling rejuvenated and on top of the world, reassures Ezel that he's fine and even better than ever. However, Ezel's eyes widen with a mix of surprise and admiration as she takes in Aaron's well-built physique, reminding him of some important business he has with his older brother, Kiruan. Following Ezel's prompt, Aaron makes his way to the training ground, heart pounding with anticipation. As he approaches, he is greeted by his brother Kiruan, whose stern expression gives Aaron goosebumps. What will his brother say? Find out on our next recap. Stay on the lookout. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more manual recaps like this.